We also updated our forward guidance indicating that an increase in the target range for the federal funds rate remains unlikely at our next meeting in April. With continued improvement in economic conditions, however, we do not want to rule out the possibility that an increase in the target range could be warranted at subsequent meetings. Let me emphasize, however, that the timing of the initial increase in the target range will depend on the committee's assessment of incoming information. Today's modification of our guidance should not be interpreted to mean that we have decided on the timing of that increase. In other words, just because we remove the word patient from the statement doesn't mean we're going to be impatient. Moreover, even after the initial increase in the target funds rate, our policy is likely to remain highly accommodative to support continued progress toward our objectives of maximum employment and 2% inflation. Before we get started, please check out our sponsor, Lear Capital. That's Lear Capital, the precious metals leader. Buy gold, buy silver, do it today. Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning into AMTV Alternative Media Television. It's raining outside right now. I don't know if you can hear the pitter pattering of raindrops. Maybe it's tears. Maybe it's America watering its eyes. You know, I watched the Federal Reserve Chairwoman speak yesterday all day. I watched her play words, play off words, suggest that they're going to remove the word patient, but they're still not going to be impatient. But maybe they're patient, maybe they're not. They're never going to raise interest rates. They're going to raise interest rates. I even watched supporters of the Fed. You know, people like Steve Leesman of CNBC honestly just look totally and utterly confused. I mean, people that honestly think that the Federal Reserve is going to act after seven or eight years of the shenanigans post the 2008-2009 financial collapse, only to realize after almost eight years that they're not going to do shit. They're not going to do a single gosh darn thing regarding interest rates. I mean, we're talking about raising interest rates from zero by 25 basis points, still keeping it under 1%. So basically, we're going from zero to close to zero, and they're still not going to raise rates. Janet Yellen's been saying for years now that it's going to be data dependent. As soon as the data supports an interest rate hike, she'll be hawkish and not dovish. Yet the unemployment rate, which is allegedly at 5.5%, isn't good enough for Janet Hoare Yellen to hike rates. Well, then how good does it have to be? Because I don't know if it can get any better. Of course, we know that's not the real number. We know that's not the shadow stats. It's not the U6, which is still the real unemployment rate, which is still above 10%. But I, I can't help but look at all of this and honestly feel like I'm looking from the outside in at an insane asylum. I watched the U.S. stock market juice itself on steroids yesterday. The U.S. dollar, which has moved parabolically recently and has been strengthening, collapsed. Oil prices skyrocketed. Stocks skyrocketed. Bonds skyrocketed. Gold surged. Oil surged. And I can't help but sit back like I'm looking in one of those Christmas snow things from the outside in looking into that Petri dish and honestly seeing an insane asylum in America today. You know, I watched some commentary from Peter Schiff yesterday, who I agree with. Uh, I agree with his analysis. He's been dead right. He was dead right in 2008 and 2009, pre that collapse, and he's dead right now. But what Peter Schiff doesn't see is how this collapse ultimately unfolds. It's not going to be as simple as just QE4, you know, quantitative easing 4, which I would agree. They're going to launch some kind of form of quantitative easing 4. They'll probably launch some kind of form of quantitative easing 5. But it's going to be even bigger than that. People, for some reason, can't see it. It's going to be an entirely new paradigm. Let me explain. Whatever catalyst it is, 
It could be the U.S. dollar collapse. It could be a systemic shock to the U.S. stock market. This year, let's say, for example, where the Dow Jones Industrial Average is cut in half. Uh, there's a drop worse than what we saw in 08 and 09, worse than the Great Depression. They're not going to simply just launch QE4 as a result. They're not going to cut rates from zero to negative where they already are because, again, there's no more ammunition left. There's not a single bullet left in that gun. There's nothing that the Federal Reserve can do. So when that event happens, when the unthinkable actually happens, when the dollar collapses, when there's the crash, they'll simply change the game. It'll be a brand new system. It'll be an entirely new paradigm. They'll say, hey, you know, America, uh, things are really bad now. You know that dollar that you used to you know, transact with in your pocket? We're going to move to a new international basket of currency now. It's called the XYZ basket. Isn't that great? It could be a combination of currencies abroad. It could be the, the U.S. dollar and the euro together, along with the renminbi, along with the Swiss franc, along with something else. It could be a digital format. They're just going to change the game entirely. It'll be a brand new system. And yes, people will lose money. Companies will go out of business. Americans will lose their life savings, just like already happened with the wealth transfer in 2008 and 2009. But they're just going to change the game. It'll be a brand new system. You know, the question on everyone's mind won't be then, when will they raise interest rates? Because the answer to that question is, they never are. They'll never raise interest rates. They're never going to normalize interest rates at all. They're never going to normalize the system again because they can't. I mean, look at Greece. Greece is a example. It's a test sample for what's happening here in the United States of America. Ultimately, Greece is going to leave the Eurozone. They are, are either going to re or they're going to do something entirely and completely different. It's exactly what the United States is going to do. And that will be the solution. It'll be a brand new system. It'll be a brand new paradigm. It's not going to be as simple or as easy as what we've seen in the past. That's what's happening. And you see, Americans don't realize any of this. I mean, if you're not wowed and in total and utter and complete shock yesterday watching the games that the Federal Reserve is playing, then you're not paying attention. You're honestly just dumb. Really, you're, you're dumb. If you're not shocked by the word games that are being played at the Federal Reserve, almost eight years post the 2008 and 2009 collapse with new bubbles, with a stock market that has tripled, with a bond market where we've seen interest rates on the 10-year go from 1.6 roughly, uh, a low that we saw here recently, and then over 60 days above 2%. I mean, the lack of liquidity in the market is enormous. The price declines that we're going to see in the not too distant future are enormous. And if you're not in shock by the games being played, then you're honestly dumb, blind, or you're an idiot. One of those three, and none of those are a good thing. You see, Americans don't understand that everything has been lost. America has been raped. The system itself, the financial system is over. It's just like the Constitution. The Constitution in the United States has been revoked. The sheer fact that the NSA can wiretap every conversation that all of us have, anti-constitutionally and illegally, proves that the Constitution has been revoked. Everything has changed. The Manchurian candidate that is and has made up Barack Obama and his administration has won. We no longer have the America we once had. It isn't America any longer. The new America is the America when you go to Starbucks and try to get a black coffee, they're going to engage with you about race. They're going to write race together on your cup and ask you about what you think about race relations. That's the new America. They might as well write Islam on the cup and tell me about the prophet Muhammad or write Jesus on the cup. When did these social elitists, these CEOs, at companies like Starbucks think and come up with the idea that they have the right to somehow merge their social consciousness with their businesses. Isn't there supposed to be a separation of church and state with government and the school system? You know, corporations, I guess, can do whatever they want. But I agree with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he says likely there's going to be violence as a result of this. In fact, I think if a barista that makes 10 bucks an hour, wants to engage you on race, and writes 
race together on your cup, you should give them a Black Panther pamphlet or a KKK pamphlet and engage them on that. We live in an insane asylum. This petri dish that is no longer America. This financial system that's no longer a system. Yet nothing changes. It seems that people aren't shocked by what's happening, aren't angry. And it only proves my point. It only makes me incredibly and deeply saddened, ashamed of this country, ashamed of its people. It's over. It's leading to war. What do you think these war games are? What do you think Russia is doing at this very moment? Why do you think NATO is intercepting Russian aircraft? What do you honestly think is going on in Ukraine? The destruction of America, the emergence of the East, we've lost. It's over. The paradigm has shifted. Something new will begin. I'm Christopher Green. Get this video out everywhere. Make it viral. Hard hitting it in your face. And click the link below to support our sponsor.